Hey everyone, it's Carrie. I decided to hop in front of the camera to talk about my accomplishments in 2020 and what I have planned for 2021. And I have two categories for my 2021 goals. I have my work, which is my writing and my platform and business stuff. And then I'm also sharing a few personal goals. What did I manage to get done in 2020 despite the shithole that it became? Well, I rewrote books one and two of my series and I outlined books three and four. I've managed to get a pretty good writing routine down. I work during nap times and in the evening. Did a little bit of brainstorming for book five. I did some more live streaming. And I launched a very ill-timed service project that I was not able to get very far on, but it's carrying over into the next year, so. Oh, also, I have a shiny new website where my blog is hosted, and I'm super excited about it. <laughs> my best friend's husband is a tech genius, and he helped me out, and so now I don't have a .wordpress site. I am at carryhardisky.com. It's linked in the description. So excited. It's wonderful. I've been posting my blogs there and there's an event calendar and I'm still tweaking a few little details but it's a shiny new website. I'm very excited. It's I'm just ah, that was like the big yay thing this year on top of the writing. What is ahead in work goals for 2021? The biggest writing goal is to continue outlining the rest of the series. I have a whole bunch of single subject notebooks that are designated for each book. And that is my initial outline, brainstorming, uh, revision notes, character sheets, ideas, scene drafts, anything and everything goes into the single subject notebook and they will fill up very quickly but I figured I would start with single subject notebooks and go from there but so far it's been working out really well it's been helping me a lot I chuck a couple into my bag to take with me when I have an appointment or something like that, then I can write on the go. I can write in bed. I can write while Anne is playing and watching TV. Um, just, yeah, it's good on the go stuff. And then when I'm having my designated work time, I come in here and work some more. And I'm also going to compile everything into a Scrivener file. My next goal is what I'm calling the Creator Spotlight series. And that is where one creator or however many are connected to a project or whatever come on my channel for a live discussion. And the first one is premiering on Friday at 10.30 p.m. I am interviewing the lovely ladies of the Pontifax podcast that I have been hooked on for a couple of years now. Uh, Pontifax, uh, they go through, they talk about the biographies of all of the popes, and then they have different categories where they give them a ranking score. And it's really fun, very similar to other shows like uh, Totalis Rankium. They do uh, Roman Emperors, and then there's a American Presidents one that I'm hooked on to. Also, this format was actually started sort of kind of, I think, by the creators of Rex Factor. And they have had three series so far. They've done the Kingdom Queens of England, 
Escape of Scotland and now they're doing the Queen and Prince Consorts of England and that series is phenomenal. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be talking to Brian Fry on Friday and we're going to talk about church history and popes and geeking out about history and it's going to be a fun time. So uh, I'm excited about that. I have another one scheduled for the 22nd of this month where uh, that's going to be discussion and also writing sprints with fellow author tuber TM Sparrow and that video is already scheduled I just have to insert all of her socials in the description so mm -hmm. and um, I'm in talks with a few other people for February so and this is gonna be fun and I'm super excited ideally I'd like to have two people per month if I only have one sometimes that's cool uh, I do have to work around my part-time job schedule so that does involve me working sometimes on Fridays but as long as I give enough notice to my boss she's pretty cool if I say hey I'm doing a thing I can't work this Friday. It's also one of the advantages of getting your schedule for a whole month. <laughs> the next goal on my list that is important is cleaning my office. Um, can't see a whole lot behind me but it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> I did get a second craft cart right here. This is the beauty right here and that is all of my businessy stuff that I'm keeping organized. Um, you'd think having two desks I'd be able to manage it but I'd like some other storage other than um, old diaper boxes. Hashtag mom life. <laughs> when diaper boxes become a storage for stuff. I have been getting my life in order for the long term. I have these binders. I've been creating a long term planner kind of system. I printed off a whole bunch of calendars for the next several years. So I have an idea of how to plan my goals based on how life changes with when Anna starts preschool and school school and if work changes, that kind of thing. My next goal is monthly vlogs. I was doing weekly, he was doing my misadventures vlog, what was I calling it? Misadventures of a mom author? something like that. Weekly wasn't panning out so I'm gonna just do monthly and it, I think that'll work better because sometimes there are weeks when just nothing happens, I don't get anything done, nothing exciting is going on that I want to chronicle in my life so so there's that. <laughs> so I just think that monthly would be a lot easier to record and manage so that is another one of my goals. This one, last one is kind of work, kind of personal. I am doing it through my platform so I'm counting it under a work goal. It's relaunching my service project. Now, all of the information is on my website carryhardisky.com and it is my NICU project. Um, this is what I started in March of last year, just before the world went shit. I am collecting items to create care packages for moms with babies in the NICU. Um, right now we're just focusing on the three units of the Cleveland Clinic, which is my one of our local hospital systems. It's also the system that my daughter was in. Um, is our main, our hospital that we use. And um, collecting items like notebooks, coloring books, gift cards for restaurants, bath and body products, little things to help with self-care, water bottles, um, stuff like that. Little, like I said, little things to help with self-care, 
because that, I can attest, goes down the tubes when you're stressing about your child in the NICU. And that can be very detrimental to one's health. I was actually hospitalized about a month or so, month and a half, into Anna's stay um, because I was overly stressed and dehydrated. So uh, there was one day when I almost passed out right in the middle of the unit and they ended up calling the ER staff to <laughs> get me checked out. Fortunately my mom was there. She noticed that there was something going on and called the nurse before I dropped the baby because I was holding Anna at the time. So I came up with a list of items to collect and get into tote bags and deliver to the three units across the city. And I'm hoping to drop them off around Mother's Day. Now this will depend on COVID restrictions. I probably won't be able to drop them off personally. I might have to reach out to the nurses um, to arrange that they be dropped off. It all depends on what their limitations are because with a pandemic raging, they are really strict in locking down the NICU because premature and sick babies are very, very delicate. And even a cold can really mess things up. They've been really, really strict on limiting the outside world, even more than usual. <laughs> so I'm going to have to reach out to my daughter's former nurses and see what they suggest. But my goal for right now is Mother's Day. And if I can really get this going, um, eventually I want to build it up so it's two times a year. So around Mother's Day and Christmas time. Really quickly, because somebody's waking up, I'm going to get into my personal goals for 2021. These are pretty general, um, starting with getting my mental health uh, taken care of a bit better. I actually have a virtual appointment with a counselor on uh, January 20th. That was, I talked about it with my primary physician and um, told her what has been going on in my life, not just COVID pandemic restrictions and life being crazy, other things have been going on and it's been a time and I was not dealing with it very well. So I wanted to at least talk to somebody. So I have my first appointment with a counselor on January 20th. It's a virtual appointment. Uh, so I can set my laptop up while I'm giving little bits breakfast. Two and three, I would think, go hand in hand. My sister showed me this thing. Uh, it's the thousand hours outside challenge. And I know she tries to get her kids to be outside any as much as possible. So I really want to jump on that too. Um, also going along with, along with less screen time. Healthy meal planning. I am not alone when I say that we defaulted to a lot of junk these past few months. A lot of frozen meals, a lot of soda pop, a lot of crap. In fact, Hubby and I actually treated ourselves to Applebee's takeout for New Year's Eve. So. Although I'm saying that mine was healthy because it was a grilled chicken and trip. But I haven't been cooking a whole lot. So I want to get back to cooking. I actually have my Happy Planner cookbook right here. I was putting some new recipes in the other day. So that uh, will be ready. Uh, my next one is getting back to doing my back exercises. All my stretches. Because of the restrictions at work, I can't. They're not holding the yoga class for employees anymore, which sucks because that was a, a class I was really enjoying, but 
I can understand um, the restrictions now, but I really need to do get back to doing my stretches. Uh, I've mentioned this before. A week after we brought Anna home, I was rear-ended, and my back has been all kinds of screwed up ever since. And when I was doing regular therapy and exercising, I was starting to feel good. And then I fell out of that habit. And now anytime I walk anywhere or try and do any kind of extensive physical exercise, I am in pain. So I really need to get back on those exercises so I can keep up with a certain person who's gonna be walking soon. And my last goal, um, I am going to be looking at whether or not I'm going to keep my car. My lease is up this year. I'm weighing the pros and cons of continuing to lease or buying it outright. kind of want to continue the lease and get something new, but I don't know. Um, I have until August to think about it. I will be doing a lot of pros and cons and, and, and thinking and considering and talking to people um, to get opinions. So we'll see what happens. We have some time to think about it. So yeah, those are my goals for 2021. And I'd like to hear what you guys have planned. Um, please tune in on Friday for my interview with Pontifex. Um, I do have two more planner videos that I need to edit and get up that I was starting to get up before Christmas and then, you know, holidays, life, that'll happen and the videos got pushed to the back burner. But I do plan on getting those out at some point. <laughs> and I might do a third with the long-term planning for my work. We'll see. I'm, I'm still figuring out that system. So that's it for me. And hopefully I will see you guys on Friday for the Pontifax interview. I'm super excited. And it's going to be a good time. So I will see you later. Bye.